This has been hands down the worst work trip I've ever been on. I lost my luggage. We lost all the footage from a previous trip. So instead of going home, I am actually going to be going to Ottawa after this. And then we tried to stream our Galaxy Note 9 coverage from here at Unpack 2018 for 45 minutes before finally giving up. But at least there's a bright spot. And the bright spot is that the Galaxy Note 9 may very well be the sexiest phone we have ever seen. In fact, not just may very well be. Look, if I pull out the black one, I think you've got a perfect reflection of Brandon in there, making this officially the sexiest phone ever. Right, right? Thumbs up for Brandon Sexy, please. We're gonna tell you all about it after this message from PIA. This video is brought to you by Private Internet Access. Private Internet Access is the VPN that encrypts all your internet traffic and uses a safe, protected IP. To learn more, check it out now at the link in the video description. So, I had a whole bunch of plans, you know, best laid plans of mice and men. We were going to do the whole thing live. I had this, I had this whole joke where I was going to do like our whole, our old intro and I was going to, I was going to hold it up for, for the camera. Ha <laughs> ha, look, look, it's the Linus Tech Tips intro, LOL. You know what? We're going to do it anyway. Brought to you by, not, no, not NCIX. Ignore the man behind the curtain. NCIX has nothing to do with Linus Tech Tips anymore. Okay. So the whole keynote started with a lot of very bold claims in Grand Duet's messaging. Uh, Seek a life fulfilled with purpose and motivated to do more and the kinds of people who they imagine a Note customer would be. But of course, all that does is set very high expectations for someone like me of this device. And they've actually managed to do an incredible job of living up to most of it. So specs run down. It's got a 6.4 inch display. And the first thing I noticed about it once I got my hands on it was that it's actually got a slightly, by the look of things, slightly wider bezel than the previous S9 Plus. And I actually am fully supportive of this change because I do find that every so occasionally I'll have difficulty pressing something, especially when I'm reaching across the screen and I end up interfering with my button presses when I'm trying to type. It's got a 10 nanometer octa-core processor. This was actually very telling. One of the most interesting moments of the keynote for me was at the very end when their uh, smartphone division head, I forget what his actual exact title is, said something along the lines of, every year we work to make the Note the most powerful, most amazing smartphone ever. It's not easy every year, frankly speaking. And then he kind of laughed and it, unlike the entire rest of the presentation, really sounded genuine. And he goes, <laughs> it's not easy. <laughs> and it really is a great point because you can't just keep stuffing better and better specs into a phone every time. So it's got an octa-core processor, which depending on which region you're in, might actually mean something different. So I've got my review device here, which I have already started to load apps on. And of course, the first thing was CPU Z. So it's going to be some combination of dual sourced Snapdragon 845 processors and some variant of Exynos, probably the same thing from the S9 and the S9 Plus. You can see that the Snapdragon is the one that turbos up to 2.8. And I think the other one maxes out at 2.7. So they're even listing separate frequencies for the different products. Depending on which capacity you get, I believe these are all 128 gig versions. You'll get either six or eight gigs of RAM. They're all IP68 water and dust resistant. I refuse to call it waterproof. They've all got fast wireless charging, 4,000 milliamp hour batteries. This is another huge change. I was not that impressed with the Note 8. And one of the things that I complained about was that I felt like Samsung was being really conservative with the battery capacity of it on the heels of the Note 7 fire fiasco. Gone is that strategy. So they've brought their multi-point battery inspection process to a higher capacity, 4,000 milliamp hour. <laughs> that is a great, they're messaging it as an all day battery and I actually believe it. Physically, there's not gonna be a lot of surprises here. I actually really love the color choices this year. So they've got this, they're calling it copper. To me, it's more of like a bronzy type color. Really like this one. They've got purple making a return. They're calling it lilac or something along those lines. I like the S9 Plus purple a little bit better, but this one's pretty schmexy too. They've got a blue, and then of course, they've got a more traditional black. And most of them have matching S Pen colors, but the blue one gets this really bold yellow color. 
One of the things that stood out to me about all of the color choices this year is that Samsung really has their own identity for colors now. They have not piggybacked on anything that Apple's doing. There's no gold, there's no red, everything here is uniquely Samsung. One of the other big physical changes is the movement of the fingerprint sensor. So we've got tons of different options for biometric security. Once again, fingerprint sensor at the back, facial reader in the forward facing camera, as well as their iris scanner. And these two you can put together for what they're calling intelligent scan. They spent a lot more time talking about their vast ecosystem of other products, including mentioning things like refrigerators as they work towards sort of building a more connected world. One of the more connected things that I saw demoed on stage was Dex. So DEX has gone from being this sort of uh, weird feature that doesn't make a ton of sense to me because you have to buy this extra accessory to something that looks very seamless. So now all you need is a USB Type-C to HDMI adapter and boom, you plug that into a display and presumably you can connect a keyboard and mouse via Bluetooth, though they didn't demo that. They demoed using the Note 9 as a touchpad. That's it. That's all it takes to get a desktop experience. Now, Android still isn't a great desktop or laptop experience. Uh, this was particularly clear when Razer was showing off their concept for a phone that kind of slotted into a, a laptop shell. But with some work, and it does seem like we're going in the right direction, that could be a great way to take your work with you on the go. Of course, one of the big things they were talking about, ooh, yes, yes, this is exciting, was how much work you can take with you on the go or how much stuff. So with the 512 gig version, which is gonna be 1249 US, and then it's uh, 999, oops, that's the wrong thing, 999 US for the 128 gig version, they are saying that you can have up to 100, whoa, there it goes, you can have up to one terabyte of capacity in a phone. Well, I say, why wait? Because Samsung was saying, well, you know, you gotta wait for Samsung's 512 gig micro SD. Not me! I have the integral 128 gig micro SD. So we're gonna do it first, just for lols. I actually don't even know if this is a 512 gig phone. Oh, look at that, it's got a SIM in it. Yes. You saw it here first, my friends. That is assuming that I can get this in here. 512 gigs of micro SD going into a Note 9. I gotta remember to take that with me. That thing's like $400. <laughs> Tap here to transfer media files, boom. Just like that, it comes up. Absolutely gorgeous. Get more space, yeah, right, as if I need it. Last thing I really wanna spend some time on is the S Pen. The S Pen is something that I've always looked at as a really cool feature that I'm not likely to use, but that all changes this time. So somehow, without changing the form factor, at least to my eye, I don't have a Note 8 on me today, they have managed to cram wireless charging, Bluetooth, and a battery into this thing. So now you can use it as remote capture for taking selfies. You can use it to advance a PowerPoint presentation. And they are even opening up the SDK, I think very soon. They didn't actually give a timeline on it, but they're gonna make the SDK available to everyone. So it'll be up to app developers how they wanna use this. And I'm assuming it was by clicking and double clicking, but they were even able to go forward and backward within PowerPoint. That is absolutely fantastic. It charges in a minute, lasts for 90 minutes, and still has all the regular S Pen functionality that you would expect passively without the battery on board being charged. So this is a potential game changer for someone who is a reluctant S Penner like me. The speakers are stereo now, so that's fantastic, and they are AKG, but it always becomes a little bit less meaningful when someone like Samsung says, yeah, they're AKJ speakers, but then they, they ran out and they acquired Harman, which is the parent company of AKG last year. So it probably wasn't that hard to get the certification. And I think that's pretty much it. They didn't say much about performance specifically, other than that it's got a water carbon cooling system, which is probably fancy branding for a heat pipe. And, oh yeah, right, they announced the Galaxy Watch, which I wasn't going to review, but now I feel like I really need to get my hands on. This thing is absolutely gorgeous. It's got LTE connectivity, just like Apple's latest generation watch. They say it lasts for three days on battery, which is a huge boon for someone like me who's been whining about watches not having A, either always on displays, or B, good batteries, since they pretty much showed up on the market. So let me know in the comments below if you'd like to see a dedicated video on that. Also, they did a Bixby smart speaker, which, 
Sure, let me know if you want to see that too. So thanks for putting up with our very late coverage here, guys. We really wanted to bring this to you live, but we tried and tried and tried, and I'm only human, and I'm sorry. But what I'm not sorry about is private internet access. PIA is the VPN service that hides your true IP and allows you to bypass pesky geo restrictions and censorship by making you appear as though you are connecting from somewhere else. And we actually got a video coming on this in the near future. You can use a VPN for all kinds of things that you might not think of. They're not just for people who are trying to like conceal their identities online. You can watch video streams from another country, like if you want access to BBC and you are not living in Great Britain, and you can even get cheaper tickets for flights if you are a uh, pretty savvy. We're going to have a video coming about that soon. So go check out PIA today. They have over a thousand servers in 28 countries and we'll have them linked in the video description. So thanks for watching guys. Like, dislike, do whatever it is that you feel is right. Leave a comment. Uh, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any of our videos and I'm screwing up my standard outro. We have a merch store linked in the video description. It doesn't have shirts like this. I lost my luggage so this is the same shirt that I put on for travel. It's really comfortable. That's why I was wearing it. I wanted a Linus Tech Tip shirt. I'm broken. I'm a broken man. I said I smell.